definitely second album, Get Off Fabulous. I was definitely feeling because I remember, you know, even copying this album, kicked off hard, ran out the tank. There you go. Had a lot of, um, you know, the first four tracks were all mystical solo tracks, didn't really feature anybody else. Uh, kind of gave you a range of just his own kind of creativity. He was like, I don't want to liken him to a Buster Rhymes, but that type of artist where you want to give him his own sort of creative freedom to, you know, just try what he wants to try. And maybe not other artists would be um, that fitted on those tracks too. Peace family, welcome to BattleOnline.com, your one-stop shop for the highest hip-hop entertainment. Bring you the dopest No Limit interviews, hip-hop legends, reviews, views, news, and more. So if you haven't already, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be updated on new drops and content. For a No Limit album at the time, it did have No Limit features, but it wasn't like plastered with every sound, like having you know, additional artists. It didn't have like, no disrespect to him, like, you know, Prime Suspects. He didn't have Gambino family. He didn't have, um, you know, some of the other artists. It just had Master P, C Murder, Fiend, Silk the Shocker, Snoop Dogg, and um, Outside of No Limit, featured by Naughty by Nature, Buster Rhymes, and um, Charlie Wilson. I may have missed a few names. I know Mac was under me and Snoop and stuff too, but. I mean, to me, so to me, it was like even Buster me making that reference to the creativity. Him and Buster had a fire song on there, What You Want, What You Need. And then they did another fire one for Buster's album too, you know. Yeah, that track was fire as well. Definitely the one for Buster album, that was fire. Um, Ghetto Fabulous album. Personally, as a No Limit fan, hardcore fan, I was disappointed in the album i see what mr cool done and it's only right that the kind of creative artist that he is he knows he's a standout artist on his own so he wanted to put an album together that's more like his baby like you know i mean and i understand that fully i sometimes used to think that more of them should do that so they could get their own no notoriety and they were when the album came in with i'm um, the round out the tank listen i banged that in gym till today like that's just <laughs> fire and then there they go there they go but but for me it went watered down i i just it was just a production I need to go back and read the CD, who done, who made what beat, because there's not enough recognisable, like, KLC kind of beats. Yeah, if he had the... It, it predominantly the same, beats by the pound, a lot of Craig B, um, Moby Dick, um, you know. Yeah. If we use the same science, but with the with the more authentic No Limit sound, yeah, it would have been a banger. I just wasn't big on the production because the tune with Naughty by Nature, that was a better well, tune. Well, I mean, but you know, the tune with Buster Rhymes, I weren't big on it. Yeah, I mean, you... I'm not saying, you know, there was a lot of solo tracks. So it's hard to take away and say, this, you know, so did, did so, some of those solo tracks be looked at as like filler tracks? Some of them are still dope nonetheless, like I'm on fire. But I always felt myself like, especially these days when you play the album from start to the to the beginning, you know, I'd get to, you know, Life Ain't Cool, I'd like that song, uh, I'm on fire. It was all right, I'd listen to that story, but I'd be waiting for the next track to come in for some more of that amp, which was the one with That's Buster it. Rhymes and... Um, so I always dug that Buster Rhymes track, but another thing what I thought was dope at the time was, even though hip hop was huge and No Limit was huge, it was still a growing sort of audience and a shared audience where some people may have heard one artist or one camp and they may not have heard another camp, they're just listening to that camp. And um, I felt mm -hmm. as though, even though No Limit were big on a commercial level, they wasn't always giving that push, especially here in like the UK and other places. And Buster Rhymes being like, hey, you know, even a big artist in his own regard and stuff. Um, I felt this was like an early stage of, not like Mystical being ex gaining further mainstream exposure and stuff as well, because he was still big in his own regard, but, you know, for Buster to put him on his album and stuff too, because, um, you know, you think of Buster's albums prior to that was um, When Disaster Strikes and The Becoming and all that stuff, it, you know, it was, mainly East Coast MCs and, and you know what I mean so he definitely respected definitely. Mystical Pen Game at the same time yeah yeah so he should yeah big up to Buster yeah because um, it was getting more mainstream notoriety at that time but um, you got to remember No Limits was very independent at the time. It's not like when Cash Money was in there and Universal was behind them at the time, you're going to get a bigger push than Universal than you are from Priority, like, like worldwide. And um, Mystical, he just needed, for me, I understand the note around 
notoriety that he was getting. I understand the science that he put behind the album. I definitely do like wanting to be stand out. Not too many features. I respect that fully. The only thing is like you hit the nail on the head when you said you were waiting for the amp ones. It just needed to be for me more amp. The production wasn't no limit enough. So if you see if that wasn't a no limit album, that was just an artist called Mystical came with an album. To me, it probably would have been a banger. Do you, but do you, I think, wasn't, it, do you think that goes with side to cut with that without saying with that kind of caliber MC where it's like because I find myself like that sometimes with a bus, even with a Buster Rhymes, I like, you know, especially going back to some Buster's albums, it would be, you know, you know, we can it could really go spaz or go hard or that kind of, you know, wild on every track. Mm-hmm. Right? Some of them would have those ones, and then there'll be those ones in between where you like, uh, you know, you kind of want to skip them or you sort of just waiting for exactly. it to get amped up again and stuff. So uh, maybe it's it's something that they do to sort of, um, I guess, to take the listener on a journey and stuff, especially in those days where you know, listening to a full album was definitely more of a thing. What do you think about the feature with Naughty by Nature? This would be, you know, another collaboration they did with No Limit. They also had the number one prior with P and Silk. Yeah, no, that was a tight track. The one on Mr. Cool's album, that, to me, that was the better outside feature track. Because to me, I love Buster Rhymes, but the beat, it's because I did like the production on that. I like the production. Tretch came with it. Mr. Cool came with it. Now, nah, that was a strong track. Yeah, I think the, the Buster Rhymes production, um, the production on that track, it, it was kind of lazy in a sense. It, it, you know, it was... It was a hot beat, but it wasn't like you know what I mean. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that sound, man. It, it wasn't that sound. And even with the naughty by nature, when it suited Tretch as well, like I mean, they, like they when they I hear bought, Tretch, they bought more amp. Like yeah, what you want, what you need. Did. They bought, but they bought more amp Ooh, to that beat. That was as crazy. To the that was beat crazy. Actually, being amped itself, and um, mm-hmm. but with the dirty south, dirty just that beat just rocked, and they they just all rocked the shit out of it. Like Tretch rocked that shit, and you yeah, ask bigger than Angela Bassett, which is you know all that shit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that shit was just like some wild, right. crazy fly shit. You know what I mean? That's right, that's right. That's what I'm saying, man. They they took it there. The beat was right for both of them. You know, everything just made sense about that track. Like the beat that for you got two artists like Buster and Mr. Cool and the beat that they had together on the album. It just it, 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 yeah, it did really didn't make sense, man. But that was just it's like you do, you do take the people on a journey. Not every tune is not every song on the album is meant to be am like you said, it's a journey. But it's just that the production's just got to be right. And it was a, that production, it was a bit different. I think Mr. Cool wanted to think a bit different to fit him individually and take it away from No Limit. It could have been a banging album, but as a No Limit fan, you still need that No Limit core sound yeah. because there weren't nothing better than it, nothing secondary just wouldn't do. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I mean, you know, Mysticals would boast a few other features. I see Murders, Trapped in Crime, and, you know, sort of wrap things oh, up with man. the 504 Buzz, which, uh, yeah. you know, conspicuous by his absence in some videos and stuff. But, you know, by that time, Mystical would go on to release Let's Get Ready, which was pre-advertised as a No Limit album, but subsequently when it was yeah. really, when it was released, it came out as um, just its own sort of album, I believe, with, um, let me just confirm what record label I do believe it, it was Jive or somebody though you know what it was Jive it was I remember okay definitely was you know I know that was his, his, his previous label but you know so yeah he released that album it did have I don't want to say somewhat of a no limit sound because it did have some KLC production but it also featured yeah. a lot of production from Earth Tone and the Neptunes, it featured production from Odell, which was good. Um, so, you know, the KLC production was tight. The feature with Outcast Neck of the Woods was tight. And I think, you know, some of the stuff was leading into Mystical, um, you know, really breaking commercial boundaries because it featured, you know, Shake Your Ass and Danger. Now, I remember when I first got the album and those sounds really stood out to me because when I first got it, I thought it was a No Limit album, you know. Looked, I didn't really see yeah. the No Limit names, but I'd already, you know, yeah. mystical with No Limit, and you know, yeah. Anyway, I checked it out. Ready to Rumble was all right. Shake your ass was kind of all right, you know. But I was like, I think more. I think Ready to Rumble. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was just saying, I was like Danger more, even though it was successful as well. But Shake your ass was the big monster singer, you know. Yeah, I mean, let me just say 
that under that um that album is underrated. You know, no one's there. What was the album? What did he end up calling the album again? Just let's get ready. Did that's just get ready? Yeah, yeah. That album's underrated, definitely. And um, I'm like you. When I heard that tune, it's been long. That was my favorite song on the jump. <laughs> You know them ones there, definitely. I wasn't really a big fan of Shake Your Ass, but it makes sense. That's going to be a song that goes commercial. That, that I just, I just, I didn't really like the beat, but yeah, that was a smash for him, of course. To me, that album's underrated. There's a couple tunes in it. I just can't remember the names of it yet. Yeah, but there's, there a, there's a few songs on the album. Here and there, you know, especially those yeah. KLC productions. One of them, uh, even the Neptunes, is one jump. Um, he kind of killed, you know, that track's hot. Um, yeah, yeah. And there's, you know, there's a few little tight ones where, you know, he, he kind of really, you know, do his mystical thing and go off, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I liked that. I enjoyed that album. I think with me, it was just at the time, it was missing the whole No Limit thing. And I think then as a fan, there was a void and even explanation of like, you know, is mystical with the tank? Is he not? Then it's kind of like this album come out with two rules, you know, okay, he's saying big truck a lot. Is it big truck you pushing now? Or, you know, so it was yeah. like, as a fan, I kind of, even though, like I just discussed, his pre No Limit album didn't have, you know, the most No Limit features, but it still had, you know, the core. But, you know, it was a different time. But I'm glad that, you know, Miss School would kind of reconnect and go on to do the reunion and stuff like that. Um, we know that he did have a little brief period with Cash Money and tried a few other labels and stuff. But, you know, we're yeah. going to get to it. Man.